Hello, everyone. I'm Marty Pospisil, and um, I have invited uh, my good friend and longtime mortgage broker Paula Siemens to join me today. Uh, and she's been in the business now for many, many years. Is 32, it? I think it is. 32, 32. years. Yeah. 32 years. Oh, you beat me by two years. <laughs> Long time. Long, Long time. time. Yeah. There's no one I know. Uh, that understands the mortgage business better than Paula. Uh, I have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of clients as mm -hmm. you've used you over the years. Um, so I have great respect for your knowledge and thank you thank for coming you. in today. And you are with? Invista Siemens Group. Thank you. Uh, and we're, today we're gonna talk about variable rate mortgages and trigger rates. Uh, very interesting topic because we're seeing rates increase mm -hmm. uh, substantially uh, as time goes on and there's a lot of questions that we're getting and I thought hey let's just do a short discussion on this so we can inform our clients uh, with a link rather than answer the same question a hundred times and over, over yeah. and over. <laughs> so Paula, um, what why is now different from say 2021 when most people went with a variable rate mortgage? Why are they suffering now? What's happening? So the big, the big thing is, is that anyone who's taken a, a variable since March 2020, mm -hmm. they started off when the prime rate was 2.45. And most right. people had a rate discount somewhere around 1% or greater. Mm -hmm. So just in simple terms, you know, people started off with a payment that was based on roughly 1.45, maybe down to 1.25%. Right. Percent. So incredibly yeah. low. Yeah. Historically incredibly low. And so if you started with that payment, we've now had 3.5% uh, increases to the Bank of Canada um, rate um, since March 2020. Right. And um, incredibly quick. Incredibly quick because they're trying to stave off inflation. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to give it everything that they, they can to bring inflation down. Mm -hmm. And the payment hasn't changed for many clients. Mm -hmm. So if you're with a major bank, mm -hmm. you will have a steady payment. Um, right. And that's so, supposed to be so people don't, um, they're not ne negatively impacted by rate increases. Mm -hmm. And it also accelerates the pay down when rates go down. So that's why variables have always been a good thing. Right. Because historically speaking, you've always kind of come out ahead. Right. This is a very unique time mm -hmm. in the market mm -hmm. that nobody saw. Nobody could see it. As far as um, as high up in the banking system, nobody saw this happening. Right. And um, But here we are. And as of September mm -hmm. uh, 2022, many people have hit their trigger rate, which means that their payment no longer covers the interest expense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's the, no principal. Right. And they're not covering the interest. They're actually going into the negative, which is called negative amortization. Okay. So they are no longer impacting their principal balance mortgage that they took out initially mm -hmm. with the payments that they were making because the rates have gone up so high that they're actually adding to their balance. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So what what are the options that people have when they, I'm getting ahead of myself um, because this is a question for a little bit later, what options do they have when, when they hit their trigger rate? But just before we get there, how would I know if my variable rate mortgage is close to or at my trigger rate? How do yeah. I how do I figure that out? Um, so you can go into your web banking and look at your mortgage, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to see what your amortization is. Okay. And that will be one indication. The other is that um, you can contact the lender that you're with and ask them how much of your payment is going towards. Um, principal, if okay. any. As soon as you, they, th typically speaking, your lender has already reached out to you if you're approaching this trigger rate. Right. Um, so they will be giving you a phone call to discuss um, remedies to put your mortgage back on track. Got it. Okay, it was interesting that you mentioned that because I was just reading an article the other day from the Globe that it said the bank will give you a courtesy call mm -hmm. about your trigger rate 
um, saying, just to let you know, you're now paying only interest and no principal, but when you actually pass the trigger rate, it turns from a courtesy call to a, um, to a call saying, we're changing your, pay your payment amount. Yeah. So um, yeah. they're obligated to let you know, but can you call them ahead of time and say, oh, okay, um, at what point, um, at what interest rate for the Bank of Canada prime overnight rate uh, will I turn into a trigger? Yeah, so you can contact them okay. because the reason that it's not just simple is as many people may have done accelerated payments, they may have made lump sums, Fair we enough. don't know what amortization they started off with. Right. Some lenders are going to allow you to go beyond your amortization that you even started with. So if you started with 15 years, they'll let you go up to 30 years, no problem. Okay. Many people are surpassing the 30 year by quite a bit. I think okay. the, the um, longest effective amortization that I've recently encountered was, I think, 68 years or so. Wasn't it, isn't there a cap of amortization? Um, or, or there is in terms bank? of a new mortgage, but oh, this is what okay. the effective amortization is based on this person right. not covering their interest expense. And now the interest is accruing. Wow. Um, in, in, you know, so their payment's doing absolutely nothing. So, so what you can do is um, reach out to your bank, look at your effective amortization, mm -hmm. and then you can increase your payments. You can do a lump sum, but I fiddled around with the math, and I feel like you're better off doing an increase of payment than a lump sum, um, just simply because you do the lump sum, and you're using quite a few dollars in, in that lump sum. Mm -hmm. I think you'd be better off keeping it aside to kind of help absorb increased payments rather than Makes doing one lump sum. You'll okay. have, I think, a bigger bang for your buck doing it that way. So when you hit that trigger rate, your options are, like you say, the lump sum, but it doesn't really make the you numbers don't work. You could do the lump work, sum, right? increase of payment. You mm -hmm. could look at refinancing and stretching your amortization back out to a longer period of time. Okay. Um, and um, you can obviously fix your rate. So you could go into a fixed rate, you mm -hmm. have to go into a fixed rate for the time remaining in your contract. Right. So that's different for everybody. Okay. Um, and right now, if you're able, and if you do wanna lock in, we're sort of suggesting two to maybe three years. Okay. Ideally not five. Right. If you can avoid it. Well, interesting info. I mean, I didn't know the banks had that option to increase your amortization. If I was in that situation and I was hitting my trigger rate in my variable and they increased it up to 60 years, mm -hmm. uh, I turn 60 next year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll have to edit that out. Um, we will be, uh, I will be 120 by the time I pay my or mortgage off. But at the so. same time, you know, like if you had, if you had just taken your mortgage out in say 2020, right. you have three years left on your contract. Fair enough. So in that three years, hopefully, inflation gets in check and hopefully the Bank of Canada now has to start to cut. Right. So at some point, you know, you will start to go back down as the Bank of Canada starts to cut. Right, um, Makes But sense. it's a matter of when does that happen and how much time do you still have left in your contract? Well, and that's a whole other discussion what's happening with interest rates, yeah. which we'll talk about in another uh, uh, episode. Um, but I heard uh, or read a stat, uh, again, in the Globe, uh, where the Bank of Canada was saying 50% um, of the variable rate mortgage uh, holders have actually reached their trigger rate. That sounds really high. And they're anticipating 65% yeah. to hit it by the middle of next year. It does seem high to me, just simply because people who had their mortgage prior to March 2020, mm -hmm. they were making payments at a higher rate. Mm. Um, and um, so depending on when you took your mortgage, and as I said, if you did bi-weekly payments or if you made lump sums, you're just getting into where your amortization is mm -hmm. growing, but I don't know if your whole payment isn't going towards any interest. If, I think you might be paying still a tiny bit of interest, right? Um, but or sorry, a tiny bit of principal rather, right? Um, but maybe maybe that is the case with the October increase that we just had. Absolutely, I'll have to relook at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, and and I think the main message here, if, if I'm hearing it correctly is that as a variable rate mortgage holder, 
um, I should be on top of this. I should be in contact with my bank. I should prepare um, for next month, December 7th, I think is the next yeah. announcement. Um, and I was uh, just reading another article where um, uh, Tiff Macklem from uh, the Bank of Canada is saying, look, uh, inflation uh, is still high. Uh, we're probably going to have to raise the rates again. Mm -hmm. So on December 7th, we're going to see another jump, whatever that might be. Maybe it's 50 points, maybe mm -hmm. it's less. Maybe I think we're thinking 50 basis 50. points at this point. Significant, yeah. right? That might push a whole chunk of other people in past their trigger rate. So oh, for sure. good to plan for that yeah. because it happens. Do the banks adjust immediately or is it the next mortgage payment? Uh, no, they adjust immediately. Immediately. So good to follow up on this. Uh, really, really interesting time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like historical. Historic. Yeah. yeah, we're in historic time. We are. I this mean, never lived through a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> never lived through this type of trigger rate. So. No, there's, and uh, boy, there's a whole bunch of things happening, not even to mention climate change. We're all experiencing that yeah. all over the world. Um, we've got a major war going on that's certainly impacting us here. Oh, because, for sure. Right? That's the energy costs are hitting inflation and yeah. food, ev everything's being impacted. And that's why we're one of the many reasons why we've got that high inflation, why our rates are so high. Um, and another chat I'd love to have with you another time is um, what is the sort of forecast on rates? And, and we'll chat about that. But I think this is really good. Good information. Thank okay. you well, for welcome. this. Yeah. Thanks uh, for having me. Trigger rates, you guys. If you have a variable rate mortgage, get in touch with your lender. Find out what that um, rate is when you hit your trigger rate for your specific situation. Everybody's in a different situation. Um, and good to plan for that and prepare for that. And Paula was kind enough to share what your options are. Chat about this with your lender. Um, and it's, uh, it's just prudent to do that ahead of time. Absolutely. Be Great. proactive. Exactly. Thanks, guys.